It's this video of me being a dork with these axes for the next 30 minutes. Hi, I'm Sadie Cat Cosplay and welcome to my channel. Today's video is a tutorial on how to make the axes from Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I was very nicely sponsored some Warbla from Warbla North America to make these with and today's video is a how-to on how to make these for yourself. So if you'd like to make these, I have a blueprint for these available in my shop. Link for that is down below. And if you'd like to see me make these, then let's get into that sweet, sweet making of footage. The first step in building these axes is to make the blueprints. I did this prior to filming. Basically, I found a good reference photo, scaled my working canvas to the size that I wanted these axes to be, which was about 26 inches long, and used a program. You can use Inkscape or Adobe Illustrator to trace the reference and boom, blueprint. If you want to make these for yourself and avoid making your own blueprint, this blueprint is available on my web store. Link is down below. This build was sponsored by Warbla North America. They kindly provided the Black Warbla for this build. If you want to make these, they sent me two medium sheets of Warbla and I used in the end about a sheet and a half for both of the axes that I made. If you are unfamiliar with Warbla, it is a thermoplastic, meaning when it gets hot, but like hotter than a hairdryer. I get asked that a lot. If you can use a hairdryer in Warbla, no, you need a heat gun. When it gets hot, you can mold it, shape it, and do all sorts of cool things with it. And when it cools back down, it hardens into the shape you made it. And it's really durable and really strong. It does things foam can't do and is super durable and useful, but it's heavy compared to foam. So like all materials, it has its pros and cons, but I love it as much as foam. And I usually use it in combination with other materials to achieve the look that I want. Yeah. Warble is expensive, but you can use every single piece of a sheet of Warble. Any scraps you have, you can use, and I'll get into that later in the video. To start with the pattern or the blueprint, I'm making a base form to lay the Warble over. Without a base, Warble is actually really flimsy and hard to work with, so you always need to have something to lay it over, craft foam, PVCC, whatever. You need a base. I'm making the axe head from three layers of 10 millimeter EVA foam. This, this is EVA foam from TNT Cosplay Supply. If you want to get your own link for that is down below as well. Trace the pattern onto foam, cut it out and repeat two more times. I'm using one inch diameter PVC pipe as the handle base and I need to make space in the foam axe head for the handle. I could just glue the foam on top of the pipe and use the warbler when I put it on to reinforce the bond, but um, I'm a sucker for strength and redundancy, so I'm going to carve out the foam to accommodate the pipe. The middle foam piece, I cut out the space for the PVC, and then the other two pieces, I carefully remove foam from the inside of the, the foam piece until there's only about two or three millimeters of foam left on the outside. I don't cut all the way through and make sure not to cut all the way through so that the outside layer is nice and intact. This is a little tricky, so I just take my time, carve slowly, and eventually I get to a point where the pipe can fit without distorting the foam. And then it's time to glue everything together. I use contact cement when working with EVA foam. Uh, use a re fume respirator when working with contact cement. The fumes are no bueno. They're gross. They're stinky and toxic. Use a fume respirator. When gluing, you want to slather the sides that you're gluing together in a thin layer. Wait for them to get dry and tacky and then press them together. You also want to slather that pipe and glue too to glue into the space that I made for it. I need that nicely cemented in. And once all sides are glued together, it's time to carve in the blade edge. I used the pattern to mark where the blade edge was going. And looking at the finished axes now, I wish I had carved down the foam more to make 
the blade thinned down from where the PVC pipe was, thinning it towards the forward edge. I think that makes sense. Does that make sense? But whatever. Uh, I didn't end up doing that and they're kind of more blocky than I had hoped for, but they look fine, so it is what it is. If you want to make these a little bit thinner, you can go for it. I carve foam first before sanding to take the bulk of the material off so that I'm not sanding for an extended extended period of time. If you want to do this too, make sure your blades are nice and sharp and to sharpen often as carving with a dull knife is no fun. And hey, I get to do this twice. Two axes mean double the fun. And doing everything two times, yay. I'm glad I made both. They look great and they complement each other and I would have been sad if I had only made one of them. I didn't film putting the pommel on the Raider axe, but I made it with foam in the same way as the axe heads. So the Raider axe has the foam axe head and foam pommel. The Varen's axe has a Warbla pommel. Once the foam is attached to the PVC and carved, it is time to sand in preparation for the Warbla. I sand with a rotary tool, otherwise known as its brand name Dremel, and sanding drum, but if you don't have a Dremel, you can sand the foam by hand. By hand is way slower and more annoying, but it does work. You want a nice, smooth base to lay the warble on. The warble will show any imperfections of the material below it, so if you have anything weird going on underneath the warble, it, when you lay the warble on the foam, it'll show. I'm also adding some two millimeter foam for some of the details on the ax head before laying the warble over it. I also added some battle damage to the axe blade area with my Dremel, so the warble will be able to pick up those details once the warble is laid over the foam. Now, aside from this build being sponsored by Warbla, you may be asking, why are you making your props out of Warbla when you can just make them out of foam? Warbla is so durable. So for props that you want to last a long time and you want them to be able to go to cons and not get beat up, I do recommend using Warbla in a combination with other materials to make them sturdier and last longer. That aside, now that your axes are assembled, the base is all good, it's all sanded, it's time to get that Warbla on the axe. So trace the axe head onto the warbler and make sure that warbler is about an inch wider on all edges than the axe head. You're going to want to have enough of a uh, sort of a seam allowance to wrap the edges and to cover the whole axe head. Flip the axe, trace again, and now it's time to cut the warbler out. When cutting warbler sheets, I do advise using some heavy duty scissors or I sometimes use garden shears that are spring-loaded. It is a bit of a thicker material to cut and does require some hand strength, so be aware of that when working with Warbla. Now for the fun, uh, sometimes tricky part, which is covering the foam in Warbla. Pro tip, do not heat Warbla on your cutting mat. If you do, the mat will warp and you will be sad. I don't speak from experience, no. Not at all, my cutting mat's fine. When ready to go to town with the heat gun, I remove the cutting mat and use a silicone baking sheet on my desk since Warbler is sticky when hot and can stick to your desk. My baking mat has seen some things, let me tell you, but it still works and so I still use it. Also, pro tip when working with Warbler, do a finger protect and wear gloves. The temperatures Warbler needs to be to be able to bend and work with are 70 to 90 degrees Celsius, which is 158 to 194 Fahrenheit. That's hot. And that's an invitation to burn town. I use rubberized work gloves when working with Warbler. I've had my gloves for years and it's almost about time to replace them, but for like 15 bucks for four years of use, worth. I can work with Warbler with my bare hands, but I've been doing this for years and I'm used to the pain. But don't be like me and damaging your hands all the time. Wear gloves. 
I'm using a single thickness of Warbler for covering the foam. I would not recommend using a double thickness or even thicker as you will lose the foam details underneath with thicker Warbler layers. So for covering over a prop or armor, foam armor, only use a single layer. If you need to work with Warbler on its own without a backing material or without it covering something, I would recommend using more than one layer, but for this type of application, a single layer is great. Heat up the piece of Warbla and lay it over the axe head. Continue to heat, pressing the Warbla down over the foam. I use some silicone tipped and metal tipped clay tools to help bring out the details and press the Warbla into small spaces. I'll also use my fingernails to press the Warbla into details once it's cooled a bit, of course. When it comes to covering corners, I'll press the Warbler together and snip off the excess and then work the seam down with my fingers so that it's not visible. I'll also bend the Warbler up where I think the main seam between the two sides of the Warbler, between the two sides of the axe is gonna go to prep for putting the Warbler on the other side. The process of covering a prop in Warbler does take practice. If you are new to this and have a hard time don't worry, go slow, and if you end up with weird globs or bumps, never fear, Warble is sandable. I'll get to that in a little bit. Laying the second side on is a bit more difficult than the first side because now you are meeting the first side at the seams and you wanna make sure those seams are pressed firmly together and pressed down to the foam. So it's a little bit trickier, but like I said earlier, just go slow work slowly, work in sections, and it'll get covered and it'll look fine and it'll look great in the end. While the warbler is still warm, I cut off as much excess from the seams as I can. If I notice something doesn't look quite right, this is the great thing about warbler, you can reheat it, fiddle with it, let it cool again, and you fixed it. And if you need to do it again, you can do it again and again and again. You can reheat warbler and mess with it as much as you need. That's, it's the great thing about Warbla. The one thing with heating on foam is you may notice bubbles forming. This can happen as the foam underneath gets hot and releases gases from inside the EVA foam cells. You can remove these using a pin to create a small hole in the Warbla and push the gas out and the bubble down. Black Warbla for me doesn't seem to bubble as much as classic Warbla, so I didn't have any major bubbling issues on this build. I had a couple small ones that I was able to push out. To help reduce bubble formation, you can also heat treat the foam prior to putting the Warbla down to seal the EVA cells on the top of the foam and remove some of that gas beforehand. I believe I did hit these axe heads with the heat gun prior to putting the warbler on, but I don't actually remember and I didn't film it. Also, yes, I know my light is in a bunch of these shots. Apparently I didn't notice in the monitor when I was filming. I was so into building that I didn't notice. So please bear with some less than ideal footage in places. I'm still learning my new camera and camera angles and lighting setup. And don't forget, I did this process twice for both axes. Dang Skippy. For the Raider axe head details, I got a bunch of scraps together. These are those scrap suits I mentioned earlier. Heated them up, mashed them together, and rolled it out into a sheet about two to three millimeters thick. I don't have a rolling pin that I use for cosplay, so I end up using the handles of paint brushes or the handles of some of my clay tools. It works, so whatever. This is why you save all your scraps. They can be used for detail work and remade into sheets. I cut out the paper pattern and traced that on to Warbla with pencil. Then working it in small sections, heating up a small part at a time, I carved the detail section out using scissors around the outside and an X-Acto blade to cut out the small cutouts and some of the clay tools to help tease those pieces out. This was a fairly time intensive and tedious process. There's probably a better way to do this, but this is how I did it. For a lot of the details on the axes and I recorded some but not all of the detail work. I also recorded doing this for the details on the handle. So for most of the really intricate designs I did end up doing this method 
for making the details. I don't necessarily recommend it. It's very time intensive. So if you're new to working with Warbla, you may consider doing this a different way, but that's how I did it. Foam covered in Warbla, it's time to sand down all the seams. I use my Dremel for this. I've never actually tried to remove a lot of Warbla bulk by hand, so I don't know how viable hand sanding Warbla is, but the process results in a prop that is nicely covered in Warbla and you have no seams. PVC pipe is plastic and can be heated and carved for details, but when PVC pipe is heated to the temperatures it needs to be to be worked with like that, it releases some really nasty chlorine gas and sanding PVC pipe releases some really nasty dust. So that's a big no-no when working indoors, even with a respirator. So I decided to cover the whole ax handle in Warbla and that all the details would be done in the Warbla that covered the PVC pipe. Like the ax head details, for most of the rest of the details on the ax, I took scraps, smooshed them together, and used them to make strips or rolls or sheets. Making the ball and its details on the back of the Varen's ax was a lot of fun and honestly would be something that's hard to do in foam and it's made entirely from scraps. Same with the pommel for that axe, like I said earlier. The details were fun to do and they really bring the axes to life. They also took about a day for each axe. In total, these axes took approximately 40 hours to build and sand and complete. If you were wondering, that's about how long they took. After all the details were on, I did another sanding pass over all the details to smooth out surfaces and sharpen edges and get these ready for paint. Once you've finished building, now it is time to bring these things really to life with a great paint job. But first, we prime. Repeat after me. I've said it in other videos and I'll say it again. Not to prime is a crime always prime your props and armor. Black Warbler has less texture than brown Warbler, but it still has a textured surface to smooth out the texture and prime for paint. I'm using my current favorite primer, Hexflex. I did about three to four layers of Hexflex on each side, letting it dry in between. This is a PVA glue primer and it's non-toxic and can easily be brushed on and you can do this inside and there's no toxic fumes. I'm also using Hex Flex Clear, which can be mixed with paint. So for the last layer of primer, I mixed in black. So I had a nice base color to work off of. Sometimes I base white for silver paint, but I went black this time. I think it was a gut feeling about how I wanted the paint to look. For the blue sections on Baron's Axe, I went and laid down a white base first but for everything else, I used the black base coat, except for, I think maybe I put white over where the wooden section went, but the paint for these axes is mostly silver and I used a combination of two different silver tones, both from Plaid FX. I used mostly Plaid and Liquitex paints in general for hand painting. I hand painted both of these axes. I prefer hand painting and I do own an airbrush, but I didn't use it for this project. If you would like to airbrush these, go for it, but I didn't. For the wooden look part of the Raider Axe, I used a couple different shades of brown paints and mixed them and black together to make it look like real wood. The Warbler here was also thicker and not totally smooth, looked more like a real hand carved wooden shaft. That may or may not have been on purpose, but it works. When painting, always add shading and weathering and low lighting to really make your designs and paint job pop. I didn't use any highlighting on the axis because I didn't want a really cartoony look, but for any real axe, it would get covered in dirt, blood, etc. So low lights are pretty essential, especially for props. Without those kind of little details, paint jobs on props can look really flat and fake. The last step was adding a little bit of pleather to the handle of Varen's axe. I just cut out some strips of pleather and wrapped the handle and glued it on with hot glue. And 
boom, you're done. And once your paint's done, before you add the fabric onto the handle, you can seal with whatever you want to seal with, a spray sealant or Mod Podge, or you can leave the paint unsealed if you prefer, but it may wear and chip more when not sealed. Seal before adding the fabric, not after. You might ha have a good time if you add the fabric before. And done! Surprisingly, I had never made axes before. I've made quite a number of prop swords and guns, but no axes, so this was a really fun project to do. And thanks for making it all the way through this video. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any additional questions about how these were made, please leave a comment down below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you folks in the next video.